My name is Giancarlo Bernini. I'm from Austin, Texas. I'm a senior in college studying religious studies, and I'm a magician. I don't see a conflict between my faith and my magic because illusions are all about discerning what's true and what's good. As a kid, even when I was watching movies, I never wanted to be the main character. I always wanted to be the magical friend, like Merlin from Sword in the Stone. I love that those characters use their magic to be help to someone else. I was about 11 years old when I first started going to the local children's cancer clinic to do magic there. That I saw that it could impact someone's day and change their experience. This particular trick that I'm doing is about time travel and the way that faith and reason uh, kind of go together. Hopefully my magic can inspire people to seek the true, beautiful, and good in their own lives. With a randomly selected member of our studio audience, here is Giancarlo Bernini. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I have here a box, a very special box because of what's inside of it. Allison, would you mind holding on to this box for now? Just make sure that it stays shut tight, nothing gets into it, nothing gets out of it. Thank you so much. Now, since I was about eight years old, I've been fascinated by the concept of time travel. And tonight, we're going to try to make history and prove that time travel is possible right here in the Penn & Teller Theater. Now, if we succeed, we are going to need some kind of proof, something unique and one of a kind. So you come in. What's your name? Ross. Ross, nice to meet you. I have a marker here, if you wouldn't mind holding this in the air just like so. We're going to make a unique piece of art. I'm going to hold this pad up to the marker. If you wouldn't mind, just go ahead and close your eyes okay. and scribble around randomly. That's perfect. You can go ahead and open your eyes. See, what you've just done is you've created a unique piece of art unlike anything else. Do you mind holding on to that for just now? I'll take that marker back from you. And I have another question for you. Do you have your cell phone with you? I do. Could we borrow that, and would you unlock that for me? Yes. Thank you so much. See, I want to make sure that we can recognize this drawing if we were to see it again later. So we're going to take a photo of it. In fact, we're going to take a selfie here. So would you hold that up? That's perfect. And this right here is our photographic evidence. But since we are here with Penn and Teller, it's only fitting that they also should be able to verify this as well. Penn, I'm going to send you a copy of this photograph. We're going to go to your messages, start a new message. And Penn, I'm going to text you this photograph. The producers gave me your number before we started. Don't worry, I'll make sure to sell it, I mean, delete it after we're done here. Penn, please let me know as soon as you receive this photograph. Here we go. You got it? I have gotten it. Yes, I do. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> fantastic. Now, the second thing we're going to need is some form of timekeeping device to keep track of how far through time we're going to travel. Luckily for us, Ross, your phone just happens to have a timekeeping device. There is a stopwatch on your phone. We are going to start this stopwatch and place it inside of this little blue bag. And now all we need is our time traveler. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome my friend, Doug the Platypus. I've had, I've had Doug with me since I was about eight years old, and today he's going to be the world's first time traveler. I say first because this has never really worked before, but hope springs eternal. <laughs> I've been so fascinated by this concept of time travel that I have built this. It's my homemade artisanal time machine. Inside of the time machine, we're going to place Doug the Platypus. Following him, a very important item, Russ your cell phone with the stopwatch running. We'll make sure he goes in there along with Doug. And last but not least, this drawing that you've made, which we're going to place inside of an envelope for safekeeping, just like so. And now all we have to do is decide how far through time we're going to send everything. How many hours to be exact? Teller, would you mind holding up any number of fingers? Two. Two hours. 
we're going to send everything in this box back in time two hours. Now you'll notice there's no dials or gizmos or gadgets or wires in this. It's just a wooden box. But this isn't science. It's magic. And all you need is a wooden box and the imagination of an eight-year-old. It happens like this. Now, not only not only have these items vanished, they've traveled through time. They've traveled back through time two hours. Two hours ago, at which point I took these items and placed them inside of a box. A very special box. A box that Allison has been holding on to this entire time. Allison, would you bring that box forward? Thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, inside of the box, it's Doug the Platypus! Along with Doug is an envelope with a drawing inside. It's not just any drawing. Ross, it's your drawing. Pen. Pen, could you verify that this drawing matches the image that is on your phone? Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> Ross, that is for you to keep. And there's one more thing inside of this box, a little blue bag. And it's probably the most important thing, because inside is something that's very special. Particularly special for you. Because, Ross, inside this bag is a cell phone. Would you unlock this phone and verify that this is indeed your phone? Yes, that's my phone. Fantastic. Now, Penn and Teller, you're smart guys, and perhaps you can figure out a way to replicate everything that you've seen here so far without actually using time travel. But we started the stopwatch on this phone before we place it into the time machine. And Teller, just a few moments ago, you said we wanted to send everything back in time to two hours. And so if we really did just travel through time, then the stopwatch on this phone would have been running for the past two hours. Uh, about two hours. Yeah, I mean, it counts. Hey. I'm really glad that, uh, that it worked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we did it. <laughs> well, if it didn't, you could just go back in time and do it again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Once I figure it out, we can go back in time and just make sure that, that it works. So what did you think when you got invited to be on the show? I've been watching this show for so long. It's my favorite show. Oh. And just the opportunity to be here, I'm so grateful for it. Well, we loved having you here. What do you think the guys are going to say? You know, I don't know if I'm going to fool them, but I certainly hope that it's, they haven't seen anything like this before, at least. So what would it mean to you if you got the trophy? Yeah, I'm a college senior right now, so it would mean that uh, it kind of validates the fact that I want to do magic full-time professionally as soon as I graduate, and that would just validate that dream for me. Thanks. Fingers crossed. Absolutely. All right, well, let's see if your time machine brings you a trophy. Oh, boy. Boy, a lot of stuff going on. you got 15 tricks here. And they're all really, really good. Uh, I had some notes. Uh, my, my pen is running dry here. Let me get another. Just my pen just went dry here. I'll go to the second page. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, these pen too. But let me try this one. We didn't hear you say the magic word. But you, I think you did say a magic word. I think you said shimshi when you went over behind that. The, the real magic word there. You said it under your breath. Uh, Doug the platypus was a wonderful helper, maybe not the only one, but he was a great, great helper. And the thing about cell phones that kills me, you know, I'm old enough that I remember the phone call where you'd call the phone and knew where the phone was. But with cell phones, you have no idea where you're actually calling, you know. The person could be anywhere. You could call and they could be, uh, they could be in Europe. You know, you don't know where they are at all. We know that all magicians are, are liars. There were a few lying things in there. And I hope that in all of this, I may have given you some idea of how much we liked your show. And maybe you didn't fool us. Do you know what shimshi or whatever he just said means? Yeah. No, these guys are brilliant. They've got it figured out. Hey, I'm just grateful they watched the two-hour-long magic trick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you didn't fool them, but you certainly entertained them.